Welcome to the Urban Complex, a system of interrelated emotion charge ideas, feelings, memories, and impulses. This name takes the definition and lays out what a listener should expect. A podcast where ideas, feelings, and memories collide, leading towards meaningful change. I'm co host Chris Richardson. Please enjoy the journey with the Urban Complex. Smarter cities for a stronger tomorrow. All opinions by Chris Richardson, Dominic Poplar, and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Arizona State University, the Arizona Department of Education, or the Arizona Commerce Authority. Any endorsement ever messages from sponsors or slow supporting the production of this podcast. There is no relationship further than podcast purposes with any sponsor unless separately created with another entity. Enjoy the Urban Complex. Smarter cities for a stronger tomorrow. All right, Chris, here we are another week. What's, what's top of mind? What are you excited about for this week? Uh, let me guess. I, I'm guessing I know what it is. And it has to do with turkeys. <laughs> yeah, you know, just gotta, I, got, I gotta make sure I get some exercise and prepare for Thanksgiving. And by the time this airs, it will have been Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, it's the holidays. And think about this. We started this whole thing in January and we're now coming through our first holiday season. It's amazing how this year has gone by. So oh. it's preparing for the holidays and the fact that and we're coming up on episode 50. It's just been, it's been crazy what's, what's been going on with this. And I know we're having a lot of fun, but that, that's yeah. just on my, how about you? Yep. Same. Uh, same. I, I can't believe when you said it's almost been a year. You're right. It has. Time flies. It's, it's absolutely wild. Just excited to be on this journey with you. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and that's but it's, of it's neat how effortless, like people want to be part of it. They always say yes. Like we've had very few, most of the ones... I think there's only one person that's actually declined because they just started their role and they changed and, and they weren't comfortable until they knew more and they just delayed until a little bit. So that's it. And then they like lots of people give us um, like great ideas and they open the door. So I don't know. It, it's, it's just uh, nice. It flies when you're having fun though. That, that's for sure. Um, so our guest today, Ryan, uh, tell us how do, how do you know him? Anything we should be aware? Yeah. I mean, that what a, that's a perfect kind of segue right into Ryan. I mean, Smart Cities is a a journey. We're all going through this process together. We're meeting new people. I met Ryan a long time ago, and we've been on this journey together ever since. Way back when I was working with the city of Phoenix, I believe I was up in Denver um, speaking at a conference, or it was actually, I think, at the second Smart Cities Connect conference in San Antonio. That's actually where we met now that I think about it. And we've just just helped each other out along the way, because at that time, we were just starting the Smart City journey here in the city of Phoenix. He was just getting started in the city of Colorado Springs. And so we've always stayed in close contact over the years. And he's just done a tremendous, tremendous job and showed great leadership up in the city of Colorado Springs. I'm so excited we're finally able to get him on the show to tell his story because I think a lot of people will, one, learn a lot from him, but then two, just realize what a great guy is. And if you need help or anything, you can always reach out to him because he's a terrific leader. Well, cool. I haven't met Ryan, so I'm excited. Should we get him on? Yeah, let's bring him in. Here it comes. Support for this episode of The Urban Complex comes from Worldwide Technology. What if we could connect people to new possibilities, turn thinking into a way forward, solve problems before they become a problem, and share the future with everyone? We can. At WWT, we connect businesses to technology to make the impossible possible, to reach better decisions faster, to accelerate progress. Together, let's make a new world happen. Ryan, please let Dom and I give you a warm welcome to our podcast, The Urban Complex. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you, gents. I appreciate being here. I've been a, a big fan of The Urban Complex, and it's good to, to see the, the progress that it's made. And uh, Dom, it's always good to see your smiling face as well. Yeah, <laughs> great to see you, man. Excited <laughs> to have you on. Absolutely. Yeah. Great to know someone that uh, has listened listened to a few as well. So we'll have to get some tips uh, while we go through. But we we've seen that the best way to build affinity to the guest is just to start with about you. Um, what do you want our audience to know about you, Ryan, as an individual? Sure. Um, so I, I guess to start, I'm a, a native of Colorado, which uh, we're kind of becoming an endangered species anymore with all the growth and development that we've had in Colorado, but um, definitely uh, born and raised. My wife was born and raised here in Colorado as well. Um, went to school here in Colorado Springs at Colorado College. Uh, got a degree in economics, uh, an MBA from Regis University. But uh, after school, uh, went uh, chasing my career in other states. I actually moved out of the state for 
uh, about eight years, uh, mainly with one company by the name of Wholesome. They're a large, um, one of the, a global leader in construction materials uh, and moved to Michigan, uh, upstate New York uh, in Denver with that company, uh, working kind of across uh, North America um, in kind of a focus on procurement and contracting and project management is kind of my initial background before getting into local government. Uh, but it's been a, an interesting journey and wanted to get back home, closer to home to Colorado Springs area. I'm from a small town south of Colorado Springs, but uh, once my wife and I started having children, wanted to get closer to family uh, and really just look for an opportunity to move closer to home and uh, have found an opportunity with the city of Colorado Springs and have been here for uh, almost eight years now, which almost as long as I've been uh, in the private sector, which is just hard to believe. Uh, but now we have <laughs> Uh, four kids. Uh, our oldest is nine, uh, nine, seven, five, and two. Uh, we're, I always say we're a family of ours uh, because I married, a, a, my wife, is her name is Rhiannon, uh, my name Ryan, and uh, even my siblings are all ours as well, but we may, we continue the tradition. And uh, so now it's uh, Rylan, Rieslin, Riker, and Rhett are all I love kids. it. So oh, wow. It, it can get <laughs> confusing awesome. in the household uh, <laughs> who, who you're praising or who you're having to yell at at that time. But, uh, but, but well, you need a fifth and really screw with people and, and, and <laughs> make it an S name or something. Yeah, no, uh, we've definitely had that debate, and, and I, I cry uncle at four. Uh, I think we're good. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, before, before we jump to your current role and a little bit about Colorado Springs, uh, I saw an interesting company or entity you worked for, Lafarge Wholesome, I think. Uh, yeah. what, what, what was that about? It was kind of an interesting uh, philosophy or something. I, I don't know. I hadn't heard of them. Do, do you mind sharing what that was about? Yeah, yeah. So at the time I worked for them, uh, their name was Wholesome. They've uh, merged with two oh. large, two of the global, I guess, two of the three global uh, cement manufacturing and construction materials company uh, to become Lafarge Wholesome. That acquisition happened after I left. Uh, but it was a great opportunity. You know, after after college, I kind of wanted to do the, the business route. I actually wanted to be an entrepreneur, uh, but now I work in local government. So kind of uh, not, <laughs> not the exact path I was looking for, but happy nonetheless. Um, but during my private sector work for Wholesome or now Lafarge Wholesome, uh, I worked in, in Michigan. It was really around commodities. Uh, so I worked for the North American Procurement Organization. And I know uh, procurement isn't typically known for innovation. And uh, there's a lot of policies and, and things that you have to uphold. Uh, but it was a really innovative team that I worked uh, for and with uh, there in Michigan. And we purchased uh, electricity, natural gas. We in installed some renewables um, at our cement uh, manufacturing facilities and other facilities that we had across North America. So it was a really good uh, introduction. And from there, I moved on to a, a few different positions, uh, like I said, in upstate New York and and city of Denver. We actually, I was a regional procurement manager for uh, Colorado and uh, Nevada. So it's been a lot of time. Uh, but they, they just had a really interesting tagline, building uh, for the people and the planet or something like that. And I was like, man, well, I, I wonder what, what that was about. But all right. So, yeah, so and, and real quick, uh, you know, it was, Wholesome was, uh, I was actually the fourth generation Wholesome employee. Um, so it was a, a little unique for me to go outside of, of cement. Uh, we oh, wow. have cement oh, wow. in our blood. Uh, but my great grandfather uh, started at the cement manufacturing facility that we have in really my hometown uh, of Penrose, just outside of Penrose is uh, where that cement manufacturer was and still is today. My grandfather was born uh, on the property. Uh, my <laughs> oh my gosh! For thirty years, so we have I think it was over one hundred and thirty years of service to hold. <laughs> so, uh, seen a lot of changes over the years. Yeah, that's incredible. Can imagine. It's awesome. All right. Well, so tell us, like, what what is, um, for those that may not know about Colorado Springs, anything that you want to highlight in the city, and of course, tell us about your current role. Um, what, you know, just get some backdrop before we dig into some of the specifics you're doing. Absolutely, I'm, I'm a big fan of Colorado Springs and, and the state of Colorado, as you'll probably. Uh, if you haven't already, you'll probably get more of <laughs> throughout the podcast. But uh, being a native and, and working for the city of Colorado Springs, um, I never expected myself to be in local government, uh, like I said, and it was really just an opportunity to get closer to home. Um, and it was a job opportunity in procurement. So I actually started as a contract compliance manager uh, when I started at the city of Colorado Springs. Um, and, and really starting in municipal government at this time over the past eight years in Colorado Springs has been extremely exciting. Uh, you know, growing up here, Colorado Springs wasn't necessarily known for uh, what it is today. Uh, it was a growing city, but definitely not as vibrant, not as much economic development. 
um, not as much diversity, I would say, uh, you know, growing up here and going to school here uh, back in the early 2000s. Um, so now it's, you know, up, uh, about 300,000 people. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, close to half a million people uh, in the city of Colorado Springs, uh, about 700,000 in El Paso County. Uh, it's the largest city geographically in the state of Colorado with mm -hmm. nearly 200 square miles. Uh, second largest city uh, in the state of Colorado. We're, we're just south about a, an hour of uh, city of Denver. Uh, but we've been recognized over the past few years as one of the most desirable cities in the U.S. Uh, by U.S. News and World Report. Um, have a lot of great things going for us in terms of uh, the growth and development. And that leads to a lot of opportunities uh, as it relates to smart cities to, to grow uh, as our city grows and implement and integrate as much technology as we can. Uh, so, you know, my, my path with the city, again, started with a contract compliance manager, uh, Mayor uh, John Southers, who is our current mayor. Unfortunately, he's, uh, this is, he's term limited, so he has about a year and a half left. Uh, but shortly after he became mayor, it was really a kind of a top-down approach, uh, but very collaborative approach related to smart cities. And, and he has gone to the National uh, Conference of Mayors and uh, really understood the benefits or the potential benefits of smart cities. Uh, and really tasked me with looking into starting up a smart cities program, um, which I was very fortunate to, to be a part of. Uh, so it started as kind of other duties as assigned. Uh, we launched our smart cities journey back in 2017. Uh, it was, you know, me doing it part time and, and, you know, kind of a coalition of the willing. Uh, had some other great colleagues early on that helped uh, kind of start up the program. Uh, which has now led to uh, the office that it is now. So we have five full-time employees, uh, not including myself in the Office of Innovation. Uh, we have a number of different uh, smart cities projects uh, that we're pursuing and, and look to expand upon as we move forward uh, and really engaging our community uh, around smart cities. So it's been a, an interesting journey. My, my title now is the Director of Support Services. Uh, was uh, fortunate enough to be promoted to a director level in early 2000, uh, 2020, uh, but still oversee the Office of Innovation and, and very actively involved uh, in the innovation work that we're doing. That's awesome. Right. I, lo I love your journey, man. It's, it's been so fun being able to know you and, and watch you kind of throughout the, you know, the time at Colorado Springs. So I know we've talked a lot about this over the years, but this is one of our favorite questions for the guests uh, just to get their perspective. So you know, sure. what's, what's your view of smart cities? What's your definition of smart cities and kind of how do you bring that in to everything you've done and everything you've built uh, inside the city of Colorado Springs? Yeah, yeah, this is a, I always enjoy the responses uh, on the podcast yeah. from the various folks that you have on. Um, I like the term smart cities, you know, it has, uh, it's got a bad name maybe per se over the past few years, but uh, I think it's still a, a very valiant effort and uh, worth keeping it smart cities. I, I am definitely a proponent of smart cities in general. Um, but in terms of what it means to me, you know, our, our mayor, uh, we, we live on the base of uh, the Rocky Mountains. There's a Pikes Peak, which is a 14,000 foot peak uh, that we're right on the base of. And the vision that the mayor has for the city is to create a society that matches our scenery. Uh, and so to play on that a little bit, um, you know, it's, it's, I view it as kind of creating a smart city that matches our scenery uh, through innovation, technology, and collaboration. And so that's a very high level vision of, uh, of our city and, and our smart cities program, but definitely one that, uh, that we embrace uh, and everything that it means. That's awesome. And, and wow. when did you say you launched the, the smart cities program? Officially, yeah, so or we started talking about it. I would say in late 2016, okay. um, and you know, early on, was doing a lot of research of what other cities do. Uh, we attended the, I think it was the second Smart Cities Connect Conference and Expo in uh, in San Antonio. I think that's where uh, you and I initially right. met, Dom. Yep. Uh, I've been over a drink or two. Who knows? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so, so, so you so you want your city to be daunting? I know. I, and what I mean by that, I. I, I you you, you you said it's got to match your scenery. I, I, I was in uh, Colorado Springs and hiked from the hotel to the top of Pikes Peak. It's brutal. And I, <laughs> I had a cousin that was thrown up because it was like it was, it was so brutal to get up there. Uh, that's But I love how... You're trying to match the scenery. That's, that's really yeah, cool. daunting. Uh, probably not the word that we would choose. <laughs> it's, it's For us, trying it's, to hike it, uh, it's 14, it was like 14 mile climb. Um, yeah, yeah. The, if you try to hike a 14er in Colorado, you definitely have to be in shape. And, and we, and we had just come to, to elevation that day too, so it was brutal. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Actually, I have an employee, uh, Roger Austin. He uh, he has the record for the Manitou Incline, which is a, a wow. pretty daunting mile straight up uh, 
not all the way to the top, but a mile straight up. And he did something like over a thousand uh, Manitou Incline runs in one year. He, and he still goes up our trail every morning before work. He's just an animal. But Love beautiful it, place you know. to live. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, let's zoom out uh, real quick. So I know you're on the board of the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance. Talk to us. At what's, what's that organization? Tell our audience what that organization is all about. Yeah. So, and actually it, it started uh, back in 2017 when at the Smart Cities Connect Conference and Expo in, in San Antonio, uh, I met Jake Rashavi uh, there, who was uh, formerly with the Denver South uh, EDC. And, and he had a vision. He was one of the co-founders of the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance, uh, him and, and John Tolva, uh, who is also a national leader uh, in smart cities. But um, it was really so... Oh. Sorry, uh, oh, no worries, alert, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, hopefully not bad. <laughs> yeah, ho hopefully not. Um, but yeah, so we were one of the uh, founding cities uh, for the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance. I think it started with about uh, 12 cities um, and other private sector partners. And that's also grown to over 20 cities and gov government wow. entities, a number of, of uh, private sector, nonprofit, higher education, and even philanthropic organizations. Uh, they become the alliance. But um, so we've been uh, kind of an early proponent uh, of the alliance. I've, I've been on the board. I'm now on the uh, executive committee as well. Uh, and awesome. it's really been a way to, uh, similar to what you all are trying to do here with the urban complex, is share best practices, lessons learned, make connections, uh, especially look at projects where there is a regional approach to it. Uh, you know, air quality is one that we're looking at uh, in Colorado Springs and, and uh, learning from a lot of what's happened up in Denver uh, with their air quality program and, and uh, monitoring that through air monitoring sensors on streetlights. Uh, so it's really just a way to, to look to regionalize projects, uh, share uh, in our, our efforts, uh, and really just learn from each other. Uh, there's a number of different efforts that we do through the Alliance. We Pre-COVID, we had a lot of uh, uh, on-site, in-person uh uh, civic engagements, uh, uh, civic labs that we would uh, learn from private sector and public sector partners. We still do that through uh, the digital age, uh, through COVID, uh, uh, but also look to scope projects. You know, we've scoped a number of projects through the Alliance where they're looking at uh, AVs, for example, AVCO is a new, a new program uh, where we're looking to deploy uh, autonomous vehicles in a number of cities, Colorado Springs, hopefully being one of them. Uh, but it was just launched uh, with the city of Golden and the Colorado School of Mines. Uh, they've actually launched a number of autonomous vehicles connecting their campus to their downtown core of Golden. Uh, so, you know, looking for opportunities like that, uh, looking to share and grant opportunities. It's always better for a lot of the grants to have a defined scope and to have a lot of regional and statewide support through that. So it's really been a great uh, organization to be a part of. And uh, which I, what I'm really excited about is the, the National uh, Smart Coalitions Partnership, uh, which yeah. I know you're uh, heavily involved with as well. Um, so this is a, a brand new effort, but really it's the coalition of coalitions related to smart cities, <laughs> uh, if, if I, I could frame it that way. Um, so really, you know, Colorado, we have the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance uh, in Arizona. Dom, with, with uh, your leadership there, it's, uh, you guys have a, a coalition and a partnership there. Uh, I think it's North Texas, Illinois, uh, North Florida. I'm probably excluding a few uh, that are part of the, that uh, coalition, but it's uh, similar to what you're doing here, what we're doing in the state of Colorado. Uh, yep. It's really learning from best practices and lessons learned uh, across the nation as we all kind of continue our, our smart cities journey forward. Yeah, I know. I know it's really new, but we're really excited about that. You know, National Smart Coalitions Partnership. I, I, I think it's just again, it's going to be a great way for all of us to just help accelerate our own efforts, share best practices, and actually just get to meet each other, build these relationships. Um, because I think ultimately, you know, that's how, what makes our community stronger is these partnerships, these relationships that we can really leverage. Uh, and, and, you know, we've been watching, just want to say kudos to you and the team running the, you know, the, the Alliance. We've been watching that for years. And if anyone's listening, especially on the industry side, please reach out. They're a great group to work with. Um, I think you'll find a lot of benefit from, from what you all are doing there. So just great job on the leadership. I, I, any other, pro any other projects you want to maybe highlight? I don't know if there's anything. I know the autonomous vehicle one, but any other maybe projects that the Alliance is thinking yeah, the, about the, working the, on? The Alliance is surfacing. Like what, what, um, like what are you guys zoning in on as something to, 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 to highlight regionally or across the nation? Yeah, I know um, for traffic management is another one, mainly in the, the Metro Denver area. Um, Cause there are different pockets. The, the city of Denver is obviously the biggest city in Metro Denver, but uh, there's a lot of suburbs 
uh, and surrounding cities where the citizen doesn't know when you change from one city to the next, uh, per se, unless you're, you know, heavily involved and engaged and see all the signage that's up. But um, there are efforts around mobility, uh, a lot of efforts around mobility on, uh, on traffic signals uh, and just integrating mobility more efficiently uh, across jurisdictional boundaries. Yeah, that's that makes complete to- sense with, with like state departments of transportation. I know... Uh, for a while, I would go to Estes Park every year and drive through Denver and, and Colorado Springs on the way, and you could see why you'd want to to, to be looking holistically at traffic uh, for the, for those routes. Absolutely, yeah, and I think another one that we're uh, getting more into as we move forward, especially with some of the the federal uh, stimulus money that's come down, is uh, digital literacy or or bridging the digital divide. Uh, so I think they're, uh, especially from the state, is going to be receiving a lot of funding that will be available to cities. And so that's an area that uh, we think the alliance could play very well in, uh, just because it, it's aligned with our mission of what we're doing and connecting. Great point. Uh, connecting All right. So let's bring it back to Colorado Springs. Um, we saw that you were listed as one of the eight uh, or top smart cities to watch recently. What makes Colorado Springs smart? Uh, where are you headed with the program? What are you excited about? Yeah, well, um, you know, I always clarify uh, when we're talking about smart cities that just because we're a smart city or trying to become a smart city now doesn't mean that we weren't smart before. <laughs> um, you know, we've done a lot of things as a as a city. Colorado, city, we, Colorado Springs wasn't the dumbest city in America. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to be the dumbest city, right? Okay. Uh, which is another reason why I like the whole smart cities. Smart uh, city, yep, exactly. Whole, whole That's great. Uh, but early on, you know, we, we really have taken a programmatic approach uh, to our Smart Cities program, which we call Smart COS. Uh, so we, we've really taken an inventory on what we've already done. You know, we've done smart irrigation on our, on our uh, parks and open spaces. We've uh, deployed red light cameras, body-worn cameras, a number of different technologies. We have a lot of fiber on the ground related to our traffic signals. So, uh, Early on, we, we engaged our community, engaged our key stakeholders to develop a strategy. Um, and that's one of the things that we've learned early on uh, from others uh, like Dom and others uh, who regularly participate in those conferences is, you know, we have to have a, a strategy. We have to have a vision of where we're going. We can't just be chasing the next, uh, the next best thing, the next shiny object, even though I like shiny objects and we should still pursue those as well. Uh, but we, we want to do it with a purpose. We want to make sure that it's solving a problem that we have. And so very early on uh, in 2017, we actually had our first ideation summit uh, with the help of a private sector partner at the time was uh, Panasonic that helped facilitate that with us with a number of other private sector partners as well. But we basically spent a full day uh, with a lot of key stakeholders. And the first half of the day was just visioning. It was talking about what what is it to become a a smart city? What are some things that we're already doing? What are some visionary things that we'd like to pursue as Colorado Springs? And then the the second half of the day was more workshops on how do we define uh, what uh, initiatives or what programs or what projects we should pursue as a city. Uh, so out of that, we had a, a number of, uh, we, we have a published uh, smart city strategy uh, mm-hmm. on our website, and there were 11 different concepts outlined in that. Uh, and in those 11, we've touched on uh, pretty much all of those, and some have had varying success. Some have been very successful. Others are, we're not able to pursue for, uh, uh, for funding, oper- uh, funding challenges, or uh, maybe we didn't see the, the value that we thought we would initially, but that was our initial guiding document on what should we pursue. So it was very broad, but still focused. Uh, 11 concepts seems like a lot, which it is, but uh, considering how many concepts are out there for smart cities, it was, uh, we right. thought it was still pretty, pretty focused. That's and, good. Uh, even building upon that, some of the uh, initiatives that we're currently working on weren't even identified in that plan, such as 5G uh, and digital mm-hmm. literacy, which are some of the things that we're uh, actively pursuing it, uh, as of now. So we've had some, uh, some benefit with that plan early on and then turning that plan into action by deploying a number of pilot projects with the intention of scaling these projects as best we can. Uh, you know, we're fortunate to have a municipal utility. So our mm-hmm. utility is, is hand in hand with us. Uh, they own the streetlights, uh, but you know, we all report to the same uh, city council doubles as the utilities board. Uh, so we have a number of, of projects that we co- collaborate with them on. They're probably our number one 
uh, key stakeholder and, and probably not even a stakeholder. We're kind of co-leading this effort uh, across our region. They're doing a lot of work in AMI, advanced metering yeah. infrastructure, microgrids. Uh, we partnered on an EV readiness plan, which will be published here in the near future. Awesome. Uh, smart street lights is a lot easier when you have a municipal utility uh, in learning from other communities. Uh, street lights can be very controversial infrastructure. Uh, <laughs> so it's great to have uh, a municipal utility that we just all we, we uh, you know, naturally have a, a great collaboration with. Uh, so those are some of the, at, at a very high level, I mean, I could talk the hour of, of each one of those projects, as we all know, talking about smart cities. Yeah, you know, we, we just started at our last guest, Jen Tiff from Secure Circuits, talking about how amazing they had a successful streetlight program go well. So that's good to see that you weren't, uh, 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 you know, pushed away from that. Before we jump more into the Colorado Springs utilities and kind of how the formation of Smart CUS came, I'm curious, this is kind of one of those small world moments. I have a funny feeling, I know. Um, this, would be, this would be weird. Who, who was your Panasonic sponsor? Was it George? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I had this funny feeling. I knew he, I met him before. In fact, Dom, when we were at CES, I met him. Uh, he wasn't with Panasonic anymore. He was just leaving. I think he's now with Honeywell or something. I just had a funny yes. feeling that that might have been who was behind it. it it's such a small world in this space. So. Yeah. And George is just, he's, he's a great guy and extremely knowledgeable. I mean, with smart cities, you know, in order to be an expert in it, you got to know local government. You got to know utilities. You got to know telecom. You got to know so many different complex industries. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm striving to be uh, as knowledgeable as someone like George, because George is just a great guy. So he was uh, there. We, we keep in close contact even now with uh, that he's moved on to Honeywell. But regardless of the company, he's been involved in emerging technologies uh, most of his career. Uh, that's cool. so he, well, that's awesome. So so let's talk about, um, you know, you, you talked a minute ago about, the fact that Colorado Springs Utilities is under kind of the same umbrella organization of, of the state. But uh, it sounds like that's who you partner with to create Smart COS. Let's talk a little bit about the partnerships. I think those types of stories help give inspiration to others' ideas. And then as well, you talk about some of the projects high level. Is there anything that, that shows early results you want to you wanna highlight uh, in some quantified way or just to give people um, context of what you're, how, what's being successful? Sure thing. Yeah, the, the partnership, again, it was pretty natural already. Uh, one of the things that, you know, I, I know there's been some smart cities who it's kind of been a grassroots bottom up initiative and you you pitch the mayor's office on it and, and you might have the program that way. We've had the, the fortune of, of having our leadership of the city uh, really driving this and being champions uh, for a smart cities program, starting with with our, our mayor, John Southers. Uh, but at the time, it was the Mayor Southers, the CEO of Utilities and City Council, who basically issued a proclamation. So uh, a formal agreement at City Council that we're going to be pursuing smart cities. Uh, we're going to we're going to dedicate resources to it. Uh, and really, that's been the foundational element of that. Uh, after that, a lot of the pieces fell into place. And so I know that doesn't work uh, for every city, uh, but it has helped. If you do have that uh, leadership, elected official support, uh, yep. who can promote that across your city and engage those stakeholders that they say, hey, Mayor Southern is going to be at this ideation summit uh, as well, providing some remarks. I'd love for you to attend. It helps get that engagement across our community. So we've really been fortunate in that regard. Uh, and they've really, uh, on both sides of the house, on city and our utility, has been, have been driving innovation long before we are uh, pursuing our smart cities journey. And so it's it's a culture that they've built over time. Uh, and we continue to expand upon that uh, and engage a number of uh, departments. And so everything that we do, there's not one effort that we do that's centralized in the Office of Innovation. We might be the project manager, uh, but in other areas, we might be supporting a, a project that another department's working on or, or simply just being a cheerleader uh, for other departments in the work that they're doing. And so even though we've had that top-down uh, kind of direction uh, provided uh, to us uh, through Smart COS, it has generated a lot of grassroots efforts and, and kind of bottom-up engagement throughout not only city departments, but uh, across our entire city. Uh, we have a, a strong military presence here. We have a four uh, military installations. Uh, we have higher education institutions uh, with uh, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, uh, mm. 
The U.S. Air Force Academy is here in Colorado Springs, uh, Colorado College, my alma mater, Pikes Peak Community College. There's efforts to engage even some of those uh, universities through the Quad Innovative Partnership, uh, a Catalyst Campus, which is another kind of incubator around uh, entrepreneurship and business development uh, around uh, mainly our, our defense industry. Uh, so there's a lot of kind of groundwork that's been laid through smart cities, but it has become more of a smart communities program Yeah, uh, and really telling the story of, of our region and even beyond the region of the state um, and beyond the state now. Uh, <laughs> Asia, right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's terrific. And I think it is a good piece of advice because, you know, we do have a lot of mayors and elected officials that listen to this as well. And you can see what you can do if you kind of take that leadership role and, and kind of, you know, do, drive a little bit more of a top-down approach you can really ignite you know an entire organization just from that show of leadership and i think that's you know kudos to your mayor for having that foresight to, to really lead on the smart city effort and look and then and then provide you with the response you know the responsibility but then the freedom to do what you do best and create this terrific program that's grown and blossomed since i, I think that's just a perfect perfect um you know piece of advice for a lot of elected it's out there i oftentimes hear well, I don't know what smart city are, so I don't want to lead on it, you know, because it's kind of confusing. But sometimes sure. by just showing that leadership, being that vocal partner, you can really ignite your entire organization. Yeah, yeah. We still have a heck of a long way to go uh, to yeah. become a smart city. It is a, a journey more than a destination, but um, it has helped that momentum and, and keeping that momentum and, and hiring, you know, qualified folks and, and engaging uh, just passionate people. I mean, coming from the private sector to the public. Uh, there were passionate people in the private sector. I don't want to downplay that at all. But uh, in the public sector, it is just amazing the mm -hmm. passion that people have for the work that they do and, and truly being public servants. And, oh. uh, and, and someone who didn't want to become that uh, in, <laughs> in my career path, it's been inspirational to be working side by side, which is very passionate, uh, you know, community focused people uh, across the city and across our communities. That's awesome. So, yeah, so um, we do have a couple standard questions we ask every guest, or at least one's relatively new, but the ones we've asked someone, what, if there was something we could do to help, um, or if someone was listening and they and the, and you wanted them to help bring that forward, uh, what would it be? Like, wh 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 what do you need to do more of, or what do you need to get the word out, or what what problem is is uh, been, been elusive? Sure. Well, first and foremost, keep doing the urban complex. Uh, <laughs> you guys have to keep doing this podcast. I, I, I'm a big fan of podcasts in general, and this is definitely on my on my rotation of podcasts. I appreciated a lot of the uh, the folks that you've had on. I've learned a lot from uh, a lot of the uh, the folks that you've interviewed. So, so first, keep doing that. Um, well, thanks for the support, <laughs> and, and just make, keep making the connections. Uh, I mean, I, as Don mentioned, you know, the the connections I think are, are what is most important, and, and you pick up little tidbits of information uh, from your connections that you have, whether it's through a collaboration, it might be, hey, here's a great opportunity to partner with an organization, or here's a new technology that a startup has, uh, or here's a, a great perspective that a, a former uh, government official has on, or a current uh, government official has on smart cities. You know, I know, Don, one of the things that, that you've taught me early on that has stuck is just to embrace the chaos. Uh, I remember you quoted that uh, on a panel. Yeah. Really Wait, I thought Don says create the chaos. He says <laughs> maybe it's evolved to create the chaos. I don't know. But, but that's always stuck with me. And you you pick up those those little things that, that just really uh, help you, uh, you know, as, as an individual, as a smart city practitioner, but also as you know, if you're trying to start up a program or, or things like that, it's, it's just inspirational to get those perspectives. So uh, keep making those connections. Um, and, and, you know, the National uh, Smart Coalitions Partnership, I think that's another great opportunity. Uh, so, you know, if you could help keep promoting that, I know there's a lot of, I think there's a half a dozen alliances or coalitions that are part of that, but Keep spreading the word on that because I think that's a great opportunity uh, and a great ecosystem that's being built uh, that will continue to grow uh, and expand uh, across the U.S. All right. Well, we, we can keep doing those things. Those, those are good ones. Thank you. Uh, we also know that you can't do these things on your own. And, um, and so we've kind of created this question about appreciation. And a lot of times the people who appreciate would be great guests on the show too. So selfishly, uh, you know, is there anyone you want to um, show that you helped you own way? And what I mean by selfishly is if you think they're a great fit, call that out too. We'd love to have them on the urban complex if it makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, there's been so many. Uh, and Dom, you've honestly been one of them early on as, a, as an inspiration when you were Thanks. back at the city of Phoenix. Um, you know, I mentioned George. Uh, George was definitely on my list. George Karianis, now with Honeywell, was with Panasonic. Just a, a great guy and, and taught me so much when we were just kind of starting off our Smart Cities journey. And he's really helped helped us set this foundation around Smart COS. Uh, you know, beyond that, I, I, I'm sure we're running short of time. I don't have enough time to, to uh, thank everybody or, or acknowledge everybody, but I do want to give a shout out to the Car Smart Cities Alliance uh, Executive Committee. Uh, these are our folks that are just extremely uh, intelligent. They understand smart cities uh, and they're very passionate about this work. Um, and so it's been great to work with them over, you know, since we've started the Smart Cities Alliance. I mentioned a, a few of them already. Uh, John Tolva, he was with uh, the city of Chicago as a CTO, uh, worked, uh, he was a co-founder of the Alliance, uh, co-founder of CityFi, and now he works for um, Colorado University, he's getting more on the academia side, great, great guy. Uh, Jake Rashavi, uh, he was another co-founder of the Alliance, uh, he's now transitioned from Denver metro area uh, to helping uh, kind of a rural Colorado community in Chafee County. Um, become smart to continue to drive that innovation and economic development. Um, he's been phenomenal. Um, our executive director, Tyler Spidock. I know Dominic, you know him and have working, been working close with him. Uh, and we're doing the, the national partnership. Uh, another great, highly intelligent uh, person to have on board. Uh, Julia Richmond, uh, she is the, uh, I believe she's the deputy executive director uh, for the state's IT department, the state of Colorado. Uh, another one, uh, just phenomenal uh, personality, very intelligent, has a lot of private sector consultative experience and uh, was the, the uh, CIO for the city of Boulder. Uh, now she's moved on to the state. So she offered, she has just a wealth of knowledge and perspective. Uh, and last and certainly not least is, is my friend, Seth Hoffman. He's a, a city manager for the city of Lone Tree. Lone Tree is kind of a smaller suburb outside of, uh, of Denver. It's kind of in the Denver South area. Uh, and he's doing a lot of innovative things as well, uh, mainly around uh, advanced traffic signal timing and, and things mm -hmm. like that, uh, but has off offered a, a very good perspective. And that, that whole team has just been an honor to be a part of, honestly. That's awesome. Yeah, that is great. So it's great. I, I, we haven't had someone uh, give a whole team props yet. That was, I, I think it's it was perfect. Was All right, I well, loved it. Sorry, it might have been a little long-winded, but uh, no, it was right. we, we love it. It helps us know what's going on, gives the context, calls it out as perfect. So well, I think it shows the the strength and the power of that collaboration right there. That's incredible. I just that, that list of people were amazing. And, and I appreciate you giving the backgrounds of what they're doing, what their focus is too. I think it just shows. Uh, to Dom's point, that there's there's depth in why that exists. So, all right. Well, with that, the Urban Complex gives a big note of thanks to today's guest, Ryan Tupilo, Director of Support Services at the City of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. You bet. Keep up the great work. Thank you. You as well. The Greater Phoenix Economic Council, known as GPEC, was in the top economic development organization in the U.S. in 2020. As a data-driven regional organization, GPEC serves as a strategic partner to companies across the world as they expand or relocate to other markets. Over the past 31 years, GPEC has fueled the greater Phoenix economy by helping more than 850 companies and creating more than 154,000 jobs. Leaders in greater Phoenix are building the nation's most innovative and connected smart region through the Connective. This community-driven applied research model deploys technology at scale. For more information about GPEC, visit gpec.org. All right, Chris, that was Ryan. Awesome, right? What'd you think? Yeah, you know, um, I think I'll start with just the fact that there was bold leadership that created the umbrella to get moving, which is not normally the case. Usually something comes up to them, then they get comfortable, and then the leadership is defined. But it sounds like that's the way it happened. Like the leaders saw the opportunity and it was the other thing that was interesting is that it started with um, coming together with the utility company, which uh, some of the early wins were around, what do you say, advanced metering, uh, microgrid, EV readiness, even streetlights, um, which, you know, as we, we noted, there's been a couple of recent successes there. So I, I don't know, I thought that that was interesting, that the leadership gave the, the, the vision um, and created space for people to operate under and that they they partnered with a different starting group, which is utilities. And I think we've heard so far. So uh, I don't know what you think. Yeah. I love that idea of having that strong 
leadership at the top to really champion it and then provide resources to the organization, resources and life to the organization to get moving, right? Yeah. Where you're not just out there struggling to, to piece something together. Here, it's, it seems a really in sync team from elected leadership to staff. Um, and I think that's why you've seen such success that Colorado Springs has seen uh, in their smart city program. And another thing I really loved, again, is just being very strategic early on and developing the strategy, mm-hmm. identifying specific, you know, what is it, 11? 11 areas, projects, concepts, yeah. yeah. That they were going to target. But that seems a clear signal out to your citizens, to industry partners, to university partners to say, here's where we want to focus. Uh, and here's, you know, where our interests lie. So it, again, it's a really clear signal. And then of course, you can be flexible. And as you mentioned, you know, some- we Yeah, some didn't work. I, lo- I love that they were honest with where it didn't work. Oh, but at the same time, by having 11, you know, some of those fruits are going to bear fruit too. And um, yeah, it gives it- I, the, the other thing that was really interesting, in fact, it was a very theme of so, a conversation I was just having today. Someone was asking me, what would I do as a leader to spur innovation? And what they did in the very beginning was bringing this cross-functional group together to ideate together, to have a third party that helps that process. And, uh, you know, and, yeah, it was a third party, third party uh, Panasonic, but who cares if they can spark the movement and you get the leadership buy-in and the ideas surface because you're collaborating together. Um, you know, that's just the recurring things that you have to do this together. It's not like the most brilliant person sits in a room, comes up with the, the thing, 11 things themselves and just says, here's where we're going. Here's right? where we're going. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's a process that uh, <laughs> by collaborating that makes it happen. Yeah. And I'm sure you, you, that's how they were able to build buy-in to these 11 and get people really excited and interested in it. And like you said, there were new things that popped up that weren't on those 11 and they just, you know, attacked it as well. But again, just doing that up front, I thought was terrific. And, you know, just honestly, personally, what I really love about Ryan's story is that, and I think this is kind of, you know, the story of the urban complex and this whole network of, of just cool people, for lack of a better term, we're meeting, you know, he, he's not content with just being in Colorado Springs and, you know, having the great program there. You know, he's the founding, one of the founding members of Colorado Smart Cities Alliance, which is bringing cities together from all over the state of Colorado, right? He's now really helping with the National Smart Coalitions Partnership. Again, it's understanding that, hey, we're all in this together. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to get back or start something that's not specifically to your community, but can, all, all, you know, obviously help others and things like that. I just love that as a person. He's always given back and he's always tried to help other people, right? And yeah, so he's I, lifting people up too. I mean, you can tell he's very passionate about the coalition. He highlighted every individual, share a little bit about them. So, you know, they're building the culture that's going to make Colorado have some legs, right? Things that move beyond borders of individuals. Totally. We've talked about that before and, um, and willing to, to, to partner with at the national level too. I know I, you've clearly had a uh, line of sight to what he's been doing for quite some time. And, uh, you know, the, we'll see, we'll see what resonates on a national level from, 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 from all that work. There were a couple of things that I highlighted too. So. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to watch his journey in, in the city of Colorado Springs journey. I, I, I'm sure we'll, they'll be up in, you know, probably top five. I'm sure not in not too long of smart cities in, in America, but that's all great leadership by Ryan. So really excited to just watch their journey proceed. Um, so Urban or the cracks of the pavement, what do you have for us this week? I th- What's the article? Uh, I found one uh, called... Oh, I see. Tran- Transit leaders debate urban mobility myths busted by the pandemic. Um, and what one thing that jumped out, it was at Comotion in LA. And sure enough, our friends that were on the podcast from the Office of Extraordinary Innovation, mm-hmm. uh, LA Metro, uh, their boss, who they referenced, uh, Stephanie Wiggins, was, was a big part of the conversation. Um, and the thing that jumped out was something that we heard from them, which was that we need to rethink this and think about um, equity in our mobility, but this stuck out specifically. Um, this quote from the general manager of the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, Solita Reynolds, observed that transit agencies that l- relied most heavily on fare box recovery have suffered the most during the pandemic. And basically referencing, it's time to think about how to change opportunity. I mean, the, the Pittsburgh leader, um, observed that 
access to the transportation services is the baseline for success. If you don't have a car and you don't have the ability to move and, and be mobile, you, you aren't plugged in. So I don't know. I, I think that's, that's basically the theme of the article. Anything stood out from you? Yeah, no, I think you just hit it. It's very interesting. This idea of this concept around, you know, uh, universal basic mobility and just having access to transportation because you, you kind of nailed it, but there's a quote that says, you have to be pretty honest about the fact that if you don't have access to a car, you don't have economic mobility right. in most cities, right? And it's true. I mean, if you can't have access to transportation to get to a higher paying job, you know, you're stuck with what's around you. I mean, well, I especially what we saw during the pandemic and um, some cities shut down. Could you imagine if you didn't have the ability, if you, if you were dependent on your paycheck and you didn't have a way to get some subsidies, which hopefully those move for those people quick, you couldn't pivot. And, um, but then even in good times, uh, you know, if you can't get to where the jobs are or you can't depend on, on a uh, way to tra tra transport you and your family um, to access to whatever it is, school or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, I yeah, it's just, it's hard for me to have empathy there um, because I, you know, I have a car, but like you, you, it just, that those statements drive it home about how tough this is. Yeah. It's well, and it's just, what makes it even tough, more tough or tougher is the fact that there's always other challenges that these individuals are usually grappling with, right? Because these are these same individuals usually don't have the broadband connections at home. So, right. And so there's a lot really hindering these communities and, and figuring out the transportation aspect is. As, it, it'd be really interesting to see how the models get built to fund it. So it's not dependent on the individual pain as well. Pain. Like how, how do you move the money to make sure it works and it's self-sustaining. So it'll be interesting to see how this evolves over time. Yeah, I think it's been, you know, a challenge for cities for a long time because it's very capital intensive. And so how do you do it to where people then don't have to yeah, pay pay the fares? It's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard as as a light as the light rail goes by me right outside <laughs> right, right now. Right, right so yeah. Cool. Well, great, well, great stuff, Chris. That's a wrap, everyone. Until next time, have a great Thanksgiving and uh happy holidays. Yep. See you later. Thanks for listening to The Urban Complex, smarter cities for a stronger tomorrow. Please find us on where you listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. We do love your feedback. Let us know if you have ideas for guests or questions to air on Cracks in the Pavement via social media. The Urban Complex is found on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Or just shoot me an email, chris at theurbancomplex.com. Till next time.